In 1986, amidst the Soviet-Afghan war, Didier Lefebvre, a French photographer, embarked on a remarkable journey into northern Afghanistan alongside a team of doctors. With over 4,000 photographs, Lefebvre captured the landscapes, people, and the devastating impact of the conflict. Years later, his friend, graphic novelist Emmanuel Guibert, urged him to share his experiences. The result of their collaboration, along with colorist Frederic Lemercier, is the book titled The Photographer, 2009, originally published in France. Blending Lefebvre's black and white photographs with Guibert's captioned cartoons, the book vividly recounts the gripping expedition to bring humanitarian aid to the war-ravaged Afghan population. Opening with an introduction by Alexis Siegel, the book provides an overview of the conflict between Afghanistan and the Soviet Union that began in 1979. The Afghan insurgents, known as the Mujahideen, engaged in guerrilla warfare against the Soviet army and the Afghan government. Most of the fighting took place in rural areas, leaving a trail of destruction and suffering among communities ill-equipped to deal with the aftermath. Amidst this backdrop, the renowned French organization Medicines Sans Frontières MSF, or Doctors Without Borders, took it upon themselves to provide medical aid to the war's forgotten victims. To raise awareness and support for their mission, the organization's founder, Juliette Fournat, recruited 29-year-old photographer Didier Lefebvre to join the team of doctors and document their critical work. Lefebvre's story commences in Normandy, France, bidding farewell to his mother before embarking on his three-month assignment in Afghanistan. It is in Peshawar, Pakistan, where he meets Fournat and the dedicated group of medical professionals with whom he will undertake this challenging journey. In preparation for their illegal and horseback journey across the Afghan border, Lefebvre undergoes a transformation by exchanging his clothing for traditional local attire and receiving a lesson in riding. Due to his questionable horsemanship skills, he earns the nickname Chapandas. Fournat and her experienced team warn Lefebvre about the taxing landscape and high altitude they will encounter, informing him that he is likely to lose weight during the expedition. To ensure their safety and avoid the threat of racketeers, kidnappers, and Soviet army helicopters, the MSF team disguises themselves by wearing chaudhry robes typically worn by Afghan women. They join an arms caravan led by Mujahideen fighters, relying on the presence of 40 AK-47s for protection against thieves and a few shoulder-fired missiles to deter helicopters. The team also relies on the support and trusted connections established by Fournat with various Afghan individuals, including village leaders, nomads, wealthy landowners, and warlords. Their journey takes them through treacherous mountain passes, eventually reaching an open plateau. Previous missions have seen the team ambushed by Soviet helicopters at this location, resulting in the loss of a crew member. However, this time, they cross without incident. After a month-long arduous trek, they finally arrive at their destination, Yaftal. As soon as the doctors set up their makeshift hospital, people in desperate need of medical attention flock to them. Among the first patients is a boy who suffered burns from a bread oven. Two wounded men arrive, both injured by a single bullet from an AK-47. The influx of victims from the war zone continues, including a boy with a gunshot wound to the arm, another with disfiguring shrapnel injuries, and a man requiring leg amputation due to severe damage. In some cases, the doctors work tirelessly at night, wearing miners' headlamps to perform surgeries when necessary. Amidst the severity of the wounds they treat and the challenging working conditions they face, Lefebvre finds an opportunity to ask one of the MSF doctors, Regis, why he chooses to work in such a deprived and desolate place. Regis responds by highlighting the fundamental principles of medicine, emphasizing that regardless of the location, clinical observation and the study of symptoms remain the core foundation. He explains that practicing in a sanitary wasteland like their current environment provides an unparalleled education in this aspect of medicine. When bombs strike the nearby village of Pustik, Lefebvre seizes his camera and follows the doctors to the town's bakery, which has become a refuge for the wounded. After capturing a roll of film, he learns that one of the doctors, John, has been summoned to examine a young girl at a villager's home. According to her father, she has been immobile since the bombing. Curious and concerned, Lefebvre accompanies John into the dimly lit room where the girl lies. In this pivotal moment, Lefebvre refrains from taking photographs, and Guibert's evocative drawings step in to recreate the narrative that couldn't be captured on film. 
Despite the absence of visible wounds, John carefully examines the girl and points out a small dot on her stomach. He solemnly explains to Lefebvre that it is a hole, caused by a fragment of shrapnel that severed her spinal cord, leaving her unable to walk for the rest of her life. While Lefebvre's graphic memoir vividly portrays the raw suffering he witnessed during his mission with MSF, it also offers glimpses of Afghanistan's remote landscapes and provides insights into the cultural practices of its rural population. Fournat explains the significance of the Chaudhry worn by Afghan women, acknowledging that although it may seem oppressive, it actually provides a sense of security and allows women to venture out in public. The MSF doctors respect and honor this cultural practice, ensuring that their female Afghan patients remain fully clothed whenever possible while receiving their care and treatment. Discovering that conforming to Afghan assumptions about a European man is crucial to avoid arousing suspicion or danger, Lefebvre adopts identities that align with these expectations, a practicing Christian, a husband, and a father, despite being only the first. After three months, Lefebvre exhausts his film supply and decides to leave Afghanistan ahead of the MSF team. For not strongly objects, concerned for his safety, but Lefebvre embarks on his journey back to Pakistan accompanied by four guides. However, their lack of interest in their job becomes evident when Lefebvre wakes up one morning to find that they have abandoned him. Undeterred, he continues his solitary journey on horseback. As he passes through the treacherous mountains, Lefebvre is not only cautious of the looming threat of landmines, but also battling exhaustion. Convinced that his end is near, he takes a photograph as a testament to the place where he believes he will meet his demise. However, his fate takes a different turn when a passing caravan comes to his rescue. Unfortunately, this newfound safety comes at a price, as the caravan repeatedly demands money from Lefebvre during their onward journey. Relief washes over him when he finally reaches a village where Fournat has established connections. The village chief provides Lefebvre with a trustworthy guide, and he eventually arrives in Peshwar, albeit briefly spending time in jail on false charges. The MSF team arrives the following day. Lefebvre returns to France, and the book concludes with a photograph of him in Blondeville alongside his mother. Despite his challenging experiences, Lefebvre's dedication to Afghanistan persisted, and he made seven more trips to the country. However, in 2007, at the age of 49, he sadly passed away from heart failure. In the same year, the photographer received the prestigious Essentials of Angulim Award, recognizing its significance and impact. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.